Welcome to the next section of our test project course. And in this section, we're talking about mobile automation testing for Android. Let's get started. Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to the next section of our test project course and in this video we will be talking about an introduction and configuration of our real mobile application. In our last video we discussed the top 5 features of test project and we saw how we can run a very basic test from test project. And in this video we will be talking about the configuration of Android mobile application with test project agent and we will see how we can run the test with test project and in this whole course we have two sections for mobile automation testing one is for android and one is for ios operating system the one with android we're going to use windows operating system and the one with ios we are going to make use of mac operating system but we'll also show the great feature of running ios testing with windows operating system in this section so let's quickly start installing then and understand how things work so for that i'm going to flip to test project website Alright, so this is my test project login and I have already logged in within the application. And what I'm going to do is this. I am going to start creating a new test this time. But instead of testing the web application, I'm going to test the mobile application. But before selecting this one, let's, let's quickly see what our agent has got. So if I go to the agents tab here, you can see that I have my local agent running. And if you go to the devices here, you can see all the connected device of mine. So it has my Xiaomi phone connected to it and it also shows the OS type which is nothing but the Android. It also shows the OS version which is 19. So this is the APK level and it is in 19 which is cool. And you can also see that the test project recently has updated its API to support even the older version of Android operating systems. So the least supported operating system of Android is 4.4 .4 and it is currently supported. So you can click this view device option and it will show you the connected device. So if I click that you can see that it is trying to connect to my Android device. And you can see this is my uh, device here which is already running. So I'm going to close that. So it seems like everything is configured. It's very very easy. I have just connected my device using the USB connectivity and it's working fine without any problem that easy it is. So I'm going to go to the home tab and then I'm going to click the exit automation project and then I'm going to show you how to run or create a very simple test for the mobile. So you can see that within less than five minutes we are going to start running a fully blown mobile automation test with very very simple record and playback. So I'm going to select the mobile test here I'm going to hit next and then it's asked me the name of the project. So this time, let's say I'm going to test the YouTube application. So I'm going to say YouTube demo and then I'm going to hit next. Then it will ask me which platform that I need to run the test on. So I'm going to select the Android here and then it will tell you what application that you're going to test. So you can see that once I click this, it will also show me all the available or registered application which is already available within my test project. So I have already tested the YouTube application in the test project and that's why I can also see the YouTube application coming in here which is really really cool. So for instance if you want to test the YouTube app two times then you can directly select this YouTube from here and then if you hit next and if you hit record then what happens is it will start recording by opening the YouTube application for you. And if this is the first time that you're going to record, then probably you don't see the YouTube app here. So you need to add the new application from this particular option. So you need to select this add new application. And let's say I'm going to give it a name, something like YouTube new version, maybe. And then I'm going to select the device. So basically you can select the YouTube application from either a connected device. So if I click this, it will automatically query and see that there is a Xiaomi device connected to my test agent. You can select that and you can also query the applications which is already installed within your device. This is a really really cool option which I have never seen in any one of the applications so far. So once I click that 
it will automatically query all the applications which is currently available within my device you can see here and since this is a Xiaomi device it has all the MI store, MI video, MI drop and all those stuffs related to the Xiaomi is available automatically. That fast and that easy it is. It's automatically bringing things for me instantly. That's really cool. And then I'm going to select the YouTube, right? And then I can hit finish. Once I was trying to click the finish, it says that this application name already exists. Please choose a different name. See? So you need to choose something like new version. You can also upload the APK file from here. So this one we'll be doing in our next video probably while we'll be testing the Ionic application which is an hybrid application. The one which we are testing right now is going to be a native application, right? So I'll be talking about this in our next video or you can also manually add the package name. So you can see that once I select the YouTube from here, it automatically added the package name for me. It also added the activity for me. These are some things which as an automation test engineer, we have to go to the application manifest file and then we have to open that and we then have to understand where this particular activity name exists and then we have to get the package name from there. All those babysitting words are completely gone and this tool automatically queries things for you. That's really, really cool, right? And then I'm gonna hit finish so you can see that it automatically adds the application for me and then I'm gonna hit next and then I'm going to select the record. You can also design this. So we'll be talking about this in our upcoming section of this course, but as of now, don't worry about it because this is just a basic section and I'm going to show you how to work with the record and playback for now. And then I'm going to hit finish. That's it. So once you click the finish, automatically test project is going to connect the application YouTube for you within the particular Xiaomi device. So you can see that currently it is trying to prepare the YouTube application for me. There we go. You can see that it's really, really cool. It's so fast and instant that it automatically opened the application for me. And then it also asks you whether you need to reset the application to work properly because it might have ca cast some data. So you can hit yes so that it will try to prepare it for you now. And the application has opened now again. That's it. So this is how you can configure your application in just a matter of second. And now I'm going to do a simple record and playback. You can see that all of them, you can do it from this particular Chrome browser itself. And there is nothing called IDE or something that you need to install here. Everything is going to be done just right from your browser. So now let's say I'm going to search something so I can click this guy. So once I click this, you can see that it's going to bring a text box for me. You can see that this widget, over here on the right hand side it also shows that it's a android widget dot edit text so you can click this particular option to see what else you can do you can perform something like an actions like click flick gestures get text long press gestures tap type text clear contents etc those things you can do from here so these are some of the common actions that you can do or you can also add some assertions here like validations like whether it has the contained text is clickable is enabled now is invisible something like that all these wrapper elements are there right for you and you can add it within the step which is something that you can see in here so these are the steps you can do that and then you can also see the attribute of the particular element the attribute can be something like an xpath or it can be a resource id it is like a checkable it also says that it is not checkable, it's just false. And then you can see the class name and clickable. This is really, really a cool UI. I have never seen at least for a mobile application. It's more more intelligent than I have ever seen before. Or you can also save the element without doing anything. And there is also a shortcut where if you want to focus this element, you can also do a double shift, something like this. So if you go here, double shift, you can see that this particular element get locked. You don't really have to click there. And the another shortcut that you can do is if you want to type some value in the YouTube text box there, you don't really have to add something. We can directly hover the element over here and then you can start typing the value and you can see that the text box automatically appears for you. And then you can type something like execute automation selenium 
and then you can hit OK. So you can see that once you do that, it is going to start typing the value for you over there. Much intelligent enough here. I really like this. And then you can also select the first element by just clicking it. And you can see that all the actions that we are doing in here is pretty much recorded over there. And I can select this particular first element. Or maybe let's do this. We can verify this particular element. So I'm just going to do a double shift here so that the element will get locked. And then I can do a validation here. So I can say contains text. If I click this, it is going to bring you a new options here. And then you can say contains text where the text is going to be Selenium automation, right? It can be Selenium automation with C sharp or it can be Selenium automation with Java, something like that. So I'm just going to say a contain text and then I'm going to hit create so that it will save the particular value there. And let's do a pass recording. And let's try to run this whole test and see what's going to happen. So if I click this particular run, you can see that it is trying to reset the application, which is nothing but closing the app and then opening it again. And now it's going to type exit automation selenium. It's going to click the first value and then it need to verify. And for some reason, it's not verifying this value. So let me click that. This can happen if the particular text is not the one which we are looking for. You can also do this find element. So if I click that, you can see that it is trying to mask the particular element if I select the, the green color text box there. So let's do this. Selenium. And you can save it. And if you want to run that particular step alone, you can just right click and just hit run from here. So you can execute that so that you don't really have to run the whole application. And now you can see that it is currently got passed. So it is trying to find the particular value. I guess what we did was not trying to match the particular text with the whole text which we are looking for. So let's try to do this again. Automation and save it again. And let's try to run from here, execute it. And it seems like working. That's really cool. So now if I try to run this whole test once again, and the test got passed, which is cool. So you can see that within just a couple of minutes, we could able to design a very, very super simple test much easily over here. And now you can also do a record here. So if I hit this record button, you can start performing other operations right from here. So we have left it until here. So now I can click the trends. So you can see that the steps is going to be added over there. And then I can also add the subscriptions. I can click the inbox and I can click the library. So you can do all these options and everything is going to be uh, added in here. I can then again hit this run or I can do a save and exit so that it is going to add the particular test case for me right over here. So once I click this guy, you can see that that particular test which is recorded is going to be available here. So if you want to run this particular application, there are two options available basically. You can either hit this particular start recording once again so that it is going to spawn the mobile connectivity over here so that you can start running the test or you can create a job to run this particular test which is also one of the nicest option that we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, this is a way that you can run the test from here. So now if I hit this run button, you can see that whatever actions that we recorded earlier in the test case is going to be running without any problem. You can see that it has navigated to the trending, subscription, inbox and library and all of them got passed. But for some reason, this t particular step has got failed because we did not add any time out there. So we have to add a way to wait for this particular step to be fully complete. Because we did not add it, the test is getting failed. So we have to make sure that we have to wait for this particular step or pass in this particular step for a certain point of time so that it, this particular step can also get passed. So as of now, just bear with me. I'm not going to really confuse you by telling a lot of things over here. But as of now, you can see that this is the easiest way that you can do with the test project. 
to create a very super simple steps over here and then you can run the test without any problem and all of these are actually happening on a real device it's not running on a simulator that's one of the greatest options that we have so that's it guys this is how you can run the test on the test project with a real android mobile application in our next video we'll be talking about automating a hybrid application with test project and run and see how things work stay tuned for our next video thank you